So welcome everybody. I'm really happy to do this today. Um, I'm also shaky, but that's a good thing. Um, and I really, I mean, in the preparation of all the community activities that we had today, I really want you and I need you to receive me. And I also need you to give me some loving support. So maybe we can exchange some here. Um, and then about this initiative during this whole um, COVID time, um, uh, I, I was realizing that we need more input as students, as graduates, because we could not hold our normal gatherings. Um, so I asked the directors of the different institutes where we collaborate with, if they were all willing to record a lecture. And um, Erena, Ivan, Liz, Ala, Lisa, they all said yes. And then um, in me, there came really um, the spontaneous idea, I wanna do this live stream and then I will record it. So at least I can look at you, at some of you, because I see like six people <laughs> in front of me, but it's better than just seeing myself. So um, I'm happy I'm can, I can do this today and be received by all of you. So I, I gave this lecture the title, uh, The Core of the Core. Um, I also see this as um, the, the jewel that we have in our core work. And it's also um, the element in our approach that distinguishes us from other approaches. Um, I'm still letting people in because of uh, there later. Um, so what is it that, us, that, that distinguishes us? It's really that we have the courage to look at the negative and to work with the negative intention. And I'm going to speak. And I'm involved in the women's movement at that time. Um, it was 1975. <laughs> so I was a young woman and, um, and I was mainly working with other women. And at that time we addressed the issues that women were dealing with and that came to the surface at that moment. And that was really about their uh, repression and about their abuse. So I worked a lot with women who were um, suffering from childhood abuse, from um, domestic violence, and also from rape. And um, at that time when I was working with these issues, I noticed already that social workers and therapists I worked with uh, found it more easy to attune and to identify with the trauma of the child than the trauma of the uh, adult. And I will come back in my lecture later to this phenomena, phenomena, or oh, what a different word, di difficult word for me, whatever. Um, at that time, when I was working with these um, issues and with these people, uh, I really uh, learned and started to see that the trauma they were all suffering from is stored in the body. And that's where my journey as a professional, as a working with the body started. So, um, I started to uh, study bioenergetics. Uh, and during that study, I learned a lot about um, early childhood trauma and also about attachment issues. Um, and um, I felt very equipped to, to, to work with this. And, um, and I also felt limited at the same time. 
and um, that's where my search, maybe my soul search also started. Um, and that's where I came to realize that when I work with the victim, with the real traumatized victim, uh, it doesn't mean that they give up their victimized place. So I started to realize that they kept themselves in an identification with a victim and that was keeping them uh, small, limited and also weak. And I, I realized that I needed to do something else. So I started to search um, what was available in the world at that time that I could go to and that brought me to John Piracos. So in 1993, I joined a workshop in the south of France in Trimurti. And you cannot imagine at this time, but that workshop was with 70 other people. So there was a big room full, full of people from different nationalities. And there I saw him working with um, not only with what was going on with the body, but also with their intentions. And uh, I really fell in love with CORE. So that's, that's where I started. And it, till today, it, that journey didn't end. And I hope it will last my, the rest of my life. So I, I want to start this lecture with a question to all of you. And this question came from the Pathwork lecture. And it's the question, and maybe close your eyes for a moment so that you can take it in. Are you willing to discover who you really are? And are you willing to let go old destructive patterns? of thinking and reacting? That's the main question we are all dealing with. And it's really not an easy one. I guess you all know that. So before you can let go anything that you are carrying inside of you, psychologically, emotionally, physically, you really need to accept that it is there. And that's already asks courage and, and your willingness to go closer to whatever you carry inside of yourself. Um, because only when you can accept what is there it loosens up. As long as you are repressing the things that you are keeping inside of yourself, it becomes stronger. And it's also limiting you at the same time. So what we do in core energetics, I mean, we have two main things that we work with. It's on one hand, the map of consciousness that we are going through in a long term process and maybe also in every session and that's the map of conscious where we work with mask lower self and higher self and reaching um, the life task the other very important pillar is energy and consciousness so we work with the body in order to get our uh, to release our energy to get expansion in the body to charge up the body so it can open up the system is opening up for uh, coming in contact with what we repress and the need and that's really our pain and the emotions and the feelings we are holding around the pain and our um, negativity also that's help there too, because we don't allow that to come to the surface. So 
So I want to say something about um, the difference between negativity and a negative intention. So our negativity is what we all know in the meantime, that's what we hold in the lower self. That's all these negative feelings that are socially not accepted. Uh, but we are holding them. And that's our, um, our rage, our anger, our destructiveness, our um, disgust, our um, contempt, whatever. I mean, all these negative feelings that we're holding. And the more you get to know them and the more you express them, uh, the more you also will open up and liberate your whole system. The negative intention is quite something else. That's where we hold on to negativity. That's where deliberately we want to hold that for a certain purpose. The, the purpose of the negative intention is really to punish our parents from what they did to us. Um, and at the same time, we are holding a lot of resistance in order not to feel this. Um, and in this way, I mean, um, we are punishing our parents because we have experienced as a child where we couldn't deal with. It was too big, it was too strong, it overwhelmed us. And um, so we couldn't protect us ourselves at that time. So there we build a resistance in order not to feel our pain and also um, to keep our wish for, let's say, for, for protection, for safety, for, um, for our longings, we keep that alive. And it's not working that way. So um, <clears throat> we, with that whole system, I mean, something is happening to us and um, we are feeling it in our body. And it, it, um, it shrinks our assets. Um, and at, as a little kid, we cannot deal with that. So we think at that moment, because we, our consciousness is really not big enough to understand, um, we shrink and we think that's reality. So that's where we have a conviction about what happened. That's where we create an image because we think that's reality. And, and in a way, it becomes a frozen state, a frozen state in our mind and a frozen state in our body because our, our thinking is limited and our energy is limited at the same time. So that's also why we need to work all the time with energy and with consciousness. We are holding this, um, these convictions, these images, this limiting of, uh, of our energy uh, in a very unconscious way. Um, it's because we protect ourselves. We protect our pain. The pain is so big that we cannot endure it. We cannot hold it all the time. So in a way, we store it inside of our body and we repress it. We all have a, a wounded child inside of ourselves, no matter how traumatized we are. So that's also something we share with each other. Although one trauma is bigger than the other, of course, and has more impact on our system. So at that time, 
and holding the, that traumatized place inside of ourselves, we are powerless and we are helpless. And that also belongs to the situation of the child because we couldn't help ourselves. We couldn't move. We couldn't do anything of the situation. And, and, and we couldn't change anything of the situation we were, we were dealing with. So, um, and another part is the child cannot let go because if the child, I mean, it's so big, the child, when the child lets go something, they, they, it's as if they have to let go completely their individuality, and that's impossible too. So besides of being a victim of, of more or less severe um, traumatized situations, the other part of it is we keep ourselves in a victimized role. And that we see that shows up all the time. We also see that showing up in our community. Like people are asking for safety. And what is safety actually? Safety is, um, is a state also of the child because you, it's coming from a time where you couldn't protect yourself. So you needed others in order to feel safe. In, the, in your mature being, you don't need that from others. You, you are a capable adult, so you can make your own situation safe. And if you feel you cannot, that's really something to look at and to do something with. But what we want is... I mean, that also comes from the child. In a way, it falls out of paradise. And they didn't have uh, parents who protect them in a way that was needed. So we project that longing from, from paradise, the longing from paradise. We pro project it all the time to other people who have more authority. So here we want others for example, to make us safe. And it's your job to make yourself safe. So what we refuse when we, when we hold ourselves in the victimized place is we refuse to take responsibility. What you, what you couldn't do when you were a kid you can do when you are a capable adult. At the same time, we are doing something else. We all are very focused on the victim inside of us. And that's not the only thing we are. It keeps us in a split. And the split is we are a victim and we are the perpetrator at the same time. And are you willing to look inside of yourself and see the perpetrator that you are holding? Even keeping yourself in the same loop of reproducing your past and um, keeping you in the vicious circle is an act of the perpetrator you are holding inside of yourself. So if you, if you can look at the perpetrator inside of you, it will liberate you, really. It also, um, you create a connection there, what you're holding in your consciousness as, as a very dual perspective. And as soon as you can connect these two opposites, you are creating a connection inside of you, and that's also very healing. What we do collectively is also um, 
we, we identify ourselves all the time with victims. That also comes from our um, um, Jewish Christian tradition where the victim has value where we need to identify with. And when you do that, you push away again the, the perpetrator. So the negative intention that we are holding is not only individual and it's also collective. And the negative intention and the urge to know yourself is from all times. So it was already there in ancient Greek. The Greek people in ancient times went to the Apollo temple in Delphi and above their heads there was written Gnoti Seafton. It means know they self. And that's really the common life task we all have and we all carry. We have to do our work. We have to know ourselves. So we have to do our own work. We have to work and to do our reflections. We have to expand our awareness and our consciousness. And we really cannot do that by ourselves. We need others because we cannot see our own blind spots. So you need other people to shine light on your blind spot. So what I said is um, the negative intention that we hold on to to the negative and to the reproducing of the negative is also um, on, a, on a collective level. Um, the way we do that, I can give some examples maybe uh, to understand it better. Um, what we do, we are looking all the time on what's not there instead of receiving what's there. So we are holding our perspective in a negative direction. I see that a lot when um, my husband and I work with couples. They are looking all the time to their partner what they are not bringing instead of just looking what they bring. And when we, st when we start to address that, when we say, what was it that you fell in love with? What was it? Then they open up their, let's say, um, their sensitive system for what the other brings. And there they need to uh, really expand their consciousness. We are also having a negative intention in our society. We are divided in our society by by race, by gender, by sex, by religion. And the hierarchy of our society keeps us separate. And you can see that at this moment, the, the racism movement right now, it's, it's wonderful. And at the same time, so sad that it's still necessary because I walked a march in 1968 and it's still there and now they are finally saying silence is violence so speak up express yourself so we need to open up ourselves to see the others also to accept that we are equal and maybe maybe we need to have the courage as a as a, as privileged people to open up and to uh, make ourselves vulnerable in order to take others in so 
So I, I also want to give an example here of myself, um, how I kept myself silent. Um, I was recently, um, let's say the last years, dealing with somebody who was bad mouthing all the time. And I just closed my ears for it. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear the negative comments that came towards me. So I turned away. And, and because I didn't open my mouth, I kept myself silent. In a way, I accepted what was happening. And inside, I didn't. So I regret that I really didn't open my mouth. It was a mistake. I had to say, don't do that. This is negative. This doesn't bring us anywhere. So I see myself, what I do, I keep myself silent. I behave as if I don't hear it. And that's not the right thing to do. So when you read the book, and I can really recommend that, of um, Rutger Brackman, it's in English called Humankind. He, he did research again to all psychological researchers who were there since Second World War. And they were all focused on how bad people are. Um, and he tried to, um, to dive into it and see that their uh, statement where they did the research from and the perspective that they did the research from had a certain outcome and was not in a way reproducing what was real, real there. So he is explaining also what the impact of science is on us, what an imprint it has on us. So it keeps us in the imprint that we are not good, that we are negative, and we are both. Also, listening and watching the news every day, it, it keeps us in a negative mood. It keeps us in reproducing the negative all the time because we get only, the, the news that we get is only negative. They never have good stories about what was nice, what was good. No, it's about, about what's going on in the world and what's not good. And if you wanna know it, protect yourself. Protect yourself by not listening and not watching too much. And also the same with social media. Being with social media, you also get a certain imprint. And it, it keeps you in that loop and it makes you addicted. So here is another split. Individually, we want to stay as the innocent child. We want to be saved by others. We want to be rescued. We don't want to take responsibility. But as a collective, we all repeat the negative all the time. And then when I look at therapists, um, people I train, people I supervise, we all have such a tendency to be um, with the indulgent of the child and we are not addressing towards the capable adult who holds on to the repetition. So here is the jewel of our work. When we are willing to address what the mature, what the mature human being that you're working with in your therapy room is bringing into the therapy, is bringing into therapy as holding on to the negative intention. They don't want to change. And that's, 
difficult because they come in, they want to change, they want help, they want something. And at the same level, at the same time on another level, they really are resisting change. So they come in for help and at the same time they refuse change. And that's where, where we need to bring in um, the negative intention, where they are holding on to and, um, and to energize it. And the negative intention is all, always, I will not, I won't. And here, that's the other element of our work, that's the uh, energy and, and consciousness. Um, we need to charge the body to, um, to bring energy to parts of our system that's frozen, to make the energy and the feelings and the emotions around the pain connected to us so that we can express it. Because only when we can express it, um, we can expand again. We will have more energy for our daily life. So when we start to energize the body, what it does at the same time and we bring in awareness about what they are doing with the cells. That's the moment where we really expand the window of tolerance. We are nowadays working with the window of tolerance a lot. And first we need to regulate the people that they can hold themselves inside that window of tolerance. But as soon as we start to work with the mature level of the client, we are expanding it and there's no scientific, scientific research yet to prove this, but I have seen this over the years that that's something that's really happening. For this, you really need to look at, at, at the individual. Is that individual that's in front of you? Um, observe that body. Can that body, can that person contain the energy when you start to mobilize it? And if it can't hold, why is it that they can't hold it? Maybe it's too young or it's too traumatized and you need to charge it bit by bit. Because we want to work with the consciousness as well. And um, as we have learned from all the neuroscience, it's the part of our brain, the prefrontal cortex, that's the, that's the part of our brain where the learning element, where, the, where we can learn. So if, if you are charging a body that cannot contain that energy, it shuts down that part of the brain and it goes to more prim primitive parts of the brain and then it's completely either in a uh, fight or flight mode or it dissociates completely and when uh, a client is dissociating then it, it's not working i mean well you are doing some work but very important part of their themselves is split off. So that's why it's so important to, um, to attune with the energy work what you are doing to the person that's in front of you. Because we want the body first of all be and stay present, but we also want them to expand their consciousness and therefore, it's important that all elements of that person stays present. So um, let's see um, 
to uh, and give you some some examples from um, <clears throat> from the different character defenses because we are holding very different uh, negative intentions here. So, for example, when you when you work with a very early wound with a schizoid wound. That's a person who wants to stay split, who was never welcomed in the world. And um, they don't want to embrace life. So they, they have the tendency to stay split and, and to say to you, I will let you suffer because I, I was not welcomed and therefore I still stay spiteful and hateful. Um, so they are saying, I won't embrace life. I won't be here. An important thing that I want to say also here is that every later trauma in life creates a schizoid split in the body. So it's not just in our work that we look at early splits, early schizoid places but also look at what was caused later. And then the, um, the oral wound is really based on our needs and the needs that were not met. So we will do everything to others to give us what we didn't get. So, and that dynamic shows up in therapy very strongly because they are saying their negative intention is really, I won't need and I won't ask and you have to give it. And when we look at the masochist wound, it's based on um, not being accepted who they are and they had a strong no on their expressions. So they keep that dynamic inside of themselves. So they, they will say, I won't express myself and I won't give, I'm not willing to give because there was a time it was not received. Well, fuck you, I'm not going to give it anymore. And then the psychopathic wound was based on being used and betrayed and therefore they don't trust. And they try to keep control and that's the only way to have some safety. And this dynamic comes forward in every relationship. So it shows up easily in our therapy room as well. Um, they come for help and at the same time it's the most difficult place to go to and that's to their vulnerability. So their negative intention will show up with I won't give up control and I won't trust. And then we look at the rigid and the rigid wound is mainly based on the gender identity. So the child in that stage between four and six opens is very open and approaches the parents with an open heart and is rejected and therefore they really control the free flow of life and that turns into a negative intention i won't surrender so in our approach, when we work with a negative intention, of course, you look first on what the trauma is. What are the holding patterns around the trauma? What is the uh, energy that needs to be expressed? What is the container of the body that needs to be enlarged in order to feel more and to express more and to stay present all the time so that they can regulate themselves, that they can stay in the window of tolerance. And slowly we come in with the negative intention there. 
to because that needs to be addressed and it needs to be expressed as well. Like last week, I worked with the client and that man is really sensitive and really vulnerable inside of him and he felt bullied as a kid for being so sensitive. So he's expressing a lot of emotions around this fear, uh, humiliation, a lot of sadness of not being protected, a lot of uh, anger as well of being bullied about it. And then we came to a point that I was asking, tell me, how do you keep yourself in that place? Bring that negative intention out. How do you hate or reject your own sensitivity and the sense of sensitive boy that you were holding inside of yourself? And that became a completely different session and a completely different expression. And we are not there yet. There's more work to do. But he became very uh, mature. And also the responsibility kicked in in that moment. And from that moment on, he can more hold himself in that place and he can hold more the traumatized child inside of himself. So our resistance to, to protect our pain, um, that resistance needs to be energized, otherwise there will no change. And when you start to see yourself, how you keep yourself in that loop um, and, and you see yourself doing it from that moment on, there's also a, a new longing born inside of you to move away from it, to become the strong and capable adult that you are. And then there will be a change. And when we work with the negative intention, that's the moment where the transformation is happening. That's the moment where the healing can occur. So thank you for listening. I want to play a song to end my lecture. And you can leave this lecture in your own pace whenever you want to. breathing me as I surrender to the will of the divine no more stories of the past I am shedding skins at last and I realize I'm already in heaven the moment I stop running from the demons in my head and instead I choose to love them when I'm saying yes to life, oh, shadow and light, my suffering is done and I come alive. I am born and I will die by each breath of final sigh. It doesn't matter where I go, I cannot hide. But when I find my sense of peace, I can walk through hell with ease. I might fall a thousand times, but I shall. And the moment I stop running from the demons in my head, and instead I choose to love them. 
when saying yes to life oh shadow and light my suffering is done and i come alive i want to feel it all i wear my heart on my sleeve saying here i am can you see me oh i am beautiful and fucked up in the most glorious way when standing in my truth who cares what people say because the moment we stop running from the demons in our heads and instead we choose to love them when saying yes to love for oh, shadow and light our suffering is done and we come alive oh the moment we stop running from the demons in our heads and instead we choose to love them when saying yes to life oh shadow and light our suffering is done and we come alive oh the moment we stop running from the demons in our heads and instead we choose to love them oh when saying yes to life oh shadow and light our suffering is done and we come more alive